the US journalist Jeff Stein concluded a series of interviews with senior US politicians by asking them all one very simple, very straightforward question, which he asked to each one of them at the end of his interview. He said, do you know the difference between a Sunni and a Shia? And he was astonished by the responses he got. To be honest, I don't know, said Congressman Terry Everett, a member of the House Intelligence Committee. Some might say it needs renaming. In fact, the chairman of the US House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Sylvester Reyes, when asked whether Al-Qaeda was Sunni or Shia, answered, probably Shia, which of course it isn't. Then there was Senator Trent Lott, the former Republican majority leader at the time, who said in reference to Sunnis and Shias, they all look the same to me. Perhaps a quite nice sentiment, looking back. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, on the one hand, we have leading politicians, leading members of the media, full of misconceptions about Sunnis and Shias, some of them bent on pushing misinformation about the Sunni-Shia split and blaming all of the problems in the Middle East on this ancient Sunni-Shia split and hatred. Nothing to do with Western interventions, of course. And on the other, on the other hand, you have Muslims ourselves contributing to the nonsensical, alarmist, and ill-informed coverage of the Sunni-Shia divide within Islam, either by tearing chunks out of one another, both verbally and sadly physically, or by turning a blind eye to the growing hatred and ignorance within some of our own communities. Now, we British Muslims should be proud of the fact that contrary to what you might read in the newspapers, we are a peaceful, law-abiding, well-integrated, philanthropic community. Recent polls show that British Muslims are more patriotic than any other faith group. In fact, we're more patriotic than all of Scotland, apparently. And the Muslim Council of Britain, the MCB, should be particularly commended for having taken a very inclusive, very open-minded, very non-sectarian approach to these issues in recent years, to the specific issue of intra-Muslim unity with events like this event, for which, yes, I will add my voice to Dr. Shafi's Mrs. Uneza Malik should get a lot of credit for organizing an important event like this Unity Iftar. But we can't bury our heads in the sand either. Just a few weeks ago, here in London, five young extremists were found guilty of violently assaulting a random Shia man round the corner from here in Edgware Road while shouting, Shias are kafirs, they are the enemy within, they are evil. Go spend a few hours on social media as well, on Twitter or Facebook, as I unfortunately spend a lot of time doing, and you'll see vile and offensive things being said by Muslims about other Muslims. And it's getting worse, not better. Look, don't be fooled or duped. This is not about our very genuine and our very legitimate disagreements over Islamic theology, Islamic history, Islamic law. That's not what we're here to iron out or resolve or agree upon tonight or any other night. This is about politics, Middle East politics, geopolitics, and we need to be very clear-eyed about what this is about. This is not about religion. And British Muslims, this is my view, British Muslims cannot afford to become pawns in a faraway power struggle between Saudi Arabia and Iran or any other Middle Eastern nation. Nor can British Muslims afford to import into the UK the sectarianism that is sadly so rife now in places like Syria and Iraq. And you know, we talk about sectarianism, but what we're really talking about is hatred by another name. When we talk about Sunni versus Shia, what we're really talking about is Muslim versus Muslim, brother versus brother, sister versus sister. We're so blinded by our differences that we don't see what unites us. Here we are, 1.6 billion Muslims, a fifth of humanity, both Sunni and Shia, with the same God, the same prophet, the same book, the same Kaaba, the same prayer, the same fast, the same holy month of Ramadan. After all, what are we here to do tonight? Not just to affirm our unity, but to have iftar, I hope. To eat, to eat together, to pray together. The French scholar of Islamic movements, Olivier Roy, has written that, quote, today, Azerbaijan is probably the only country in the world where there are still mixed mosques and Shias and Sunnis pray regularly together. 
As British Muslims, we should be working, in my view, to ensure we have such mosques, such joint prayers, such mixed events here in the UK much more regularly than we do. Remember, we British Muslims, whether we're Sunni or Shia, we face the same challenges and obstacles. We face the same Islamophobia and anti-Muslim bigotry, the same debates over radicalization and extremism. We endure the same attacks on our dress codes and on the halal meat that we eat. We share the same criticisms of our government's awful foreign policy in relation to the Muslim majority world. And so we need to stick together, support one another, have empathy with one another. And just on the specific subject of foreign policy, one final point before I finish. It so depresses me to see British Sunnis up in arms about oppression in Syria while ignoring the oppression in Bahrain, and to see British Shias up in arms about the oppression in Bahrain and ignoring the oppression in Syria. Our concern our empathy, our compassion has to be universal. It cannot be selective. It cannot be self-serving. As British Muslims, we have to stand up for freedom and for human rights everywhere, regardless of whether the victims happen to be Sunni or Shia, or for that matter, Christian, Jewish, Hindu, or atheist. As British Muslims, fighting the scourge of external sectarianism and external hate towards non-Muslims is as important as fighting the scourge of internal sectarianism and internal hate between Muslims. It is part and parcel of the same fight, the same struggle for pluralism, for tolerance, for mutual respect. Remember, it was Hazrat Ali ibn Abu Talib, the first Imam of the Shias, the fourth Caliph, the fourth Khalifa of the Ahl Sunnah, who famously remarked in his letter on governance to Malik i Ashtar, O oh Malik, know that people are of two types. People are of two types. They are either your brothers in religion or they are your equals in humanity. Thank you very much for your time.